Hey guys, Raul here with another episode of Cold Email Hot Takes. And tonight we have a really special one. It's uh, part podcast, part masterclass training, part announcement, because we just partnered with Andrew and his services. We're going to go deep into how it's going to work. But it's the first instantly exclusive partnership. Super excited to show you everything that Andrew is going to be helping you guys with. And yeah, Andrew's been in the Gold Email game much longer than me. Uh, he was doing Gold Email campaigns, crushing it before Instantly was even born. And a bunch of the strategies we used in our Legion agency before Instantly, we learned from Andrew. So it's super exciting to have you here. Can you give just a quick background for the people uh, that don't know you? And then we can get into it. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Raul, for the uh, nice uh, introduction. I'm uh, Andrew, founder of a company called Lead Hype. And um, our background is we, I, I've personally been doing cold email for about a decade, 2013, and which turned into a business because we were generating so many leads. And so it's a long story, but people were basically asking me, uh, how are you generating leads? And it was, you were using, uh, you know, Mailshake at the time, back back in the day before Lemless, before everything. And uh, using using Mailshake, I, I still have my invoices actually to prove it. You're paying thousands of dollars every month to Mailshake. And um, I actually still have that account. But um, <laughs> what, what happened is, yeah, people ask us how we generate uh, leads through cold email. We, we, you know, our company basically niched down, focused on cold email. Uh, before I knew it, now we have 15 full-time people focused around only cold email. Uh, we have a, a, you know, scraping software on the market and, you know, a, a beautiful Facebook group. I'm grateful to have grown. Uh, it was just surpassed by your group. I'll, I'll, I'll put that there. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, everything is uh, good. And here I am today. I hope Perfect, that's a good enough of an intro. Yeah, that's a great intro. So, like, you can already see Anders doing, like, so many different things. And you have so much like knowledge, so much insights that I think would be perfect for the people that are listening to this. So I want to really like break it down, break it into like small pieces and go step by step exactly from start from like niche and offer, the setup, the email campaign mm -hmm. setup. And we can let people know uh, mm -hmm. how you do it, like some uh, recommendations you have, what you found is really working. I really like diving deep because a lot of these podcasts that I'm doing, like most mm -hmm. of them aren't as experienced. So I'm hoping I will learn something too. So the first okay. first part that I want to go over is maybe the most important part that people mm -hmm. underestimate is that niche and the offer. So you've been yeah. working with like so many different offers. Mm -hmm. Can you name like a couple really good offers, some bad ones, and what people should be looking for if they want to do cold email, emailing for a specific offer or a niche? Well, I, I, will, I do want to tell everyone that's watching this that you are throwing me on the spot. Zero yeah. preparation for this. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And this is one hell of a question. Um, my whole experience of running cold email campaigns has brought me to the point right now where if I'm ever running a campaign on behalf of a client, which I, I rarely do at this time, it's taught me that Within within you know a couple of minutes of hearing, uh, if I'm on a sales call with someone and they explain to me what they offer and who their target audience is, I usually am able to determine if I think it's a, a viable campaign. Mm -hmm. And it it sounds really, I don't know if that came off uh, arrogant, which I hope it didn't. And no, um, no. but it's it's really the offer, and I can't believe you asked me that because I was thinking about this today. Um. So many people have this generic offer. And, and let me tell you, I've sold everything from um, um, <laughs> during COVID. This guy came to me with a, a COVID mask, a $500 COVID mask that um, had built in microphone in it. Mm. <laughs> And, and I was like, who's going to buy this, you know? And then he told me the target audience was uh, first responders, like people like ambulance, uh, EMS people, um, police officers, firefighters. And like, uh, you know, I've gone through one extreme. The other extreme is, uh, 
you know, we work with a guy that does magic shows and this majority of his income comes from quote email, quote emailing schools or corporate, you know, places to do di virtual magic. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the insane amounts, I'm talking about insane amounts of, of different pitches. People pitched me, uh, um, vaporizers, uh, like e like the e-cigarettes, yeah. health, health, healthy ones that were determined to be a aromatherapy and it wasn't classified as nicotine. <laughs> um, and they wanted to target vape shops. So mm -hmm. if, if you, if you ever really want to diagnose a campaign, it comes down to who are you targeting? And what are you selling them? Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I'm going to tell you right now, one of the, the industries I hate is e-com. I hate e-com. It's so competitive and everyone has this, uh, you know, they basically want to sell the generic services of what they believe is to be unique, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I had like two or three calls in one week of people that wanted to sell email list management services to ecom. And it's, it's, it's the same, it's the same thing. Like, of course, ecom is a great target because they base their business around, you know, their email list. But it's such a hard industry to crack. Um, one of the best campaigns I've ever ran was offering lead generation services to CRM developers. Mm. So the 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 gold the gold was I I because I I do CRM development myself at, at a much um not as advanced level, but. I, I knew that CRM developers, you know, Salesforce developers, uh, Microsoft 365 developers had, have a lot of money. They have a lot of money. They, they charge, you know, over $100 an hour for their mm -hmm. time. They're not marketers. They're, they're, you know, they're software IT guys. And, and I had this thinking, like, I was just scrolling through, like, what I used to do to, to find gold was go through LinkedIn Sales Navigator and just look at job titles. And you could just find these weird niches inside of inside of LinkedIn and like CRM developer. And then you break down even further, you know, Salesforce, Microsoft 365, um, all sorts of other other CRMs. And and they're certified in them too, right? So the certifications are there. And it's just like I I knew in my head at that time that no one has targeted CRM developers to offer the marketing. Mm -hmm. And I was only running, this is back in the day, uh, I was using at this point Levelist and we got, I was using 10 sending accounts and, you know, 50 emails a day, max, I think we're saying less than that. But um, I got 30 calls booked, 30, 30 calls in three weeks, I think booked. Damn. And and it was just like it was so mind blowing. And mm -hmm. um, I actually had a partner at the time that was doing uh, closing for me, and <laughs> he got angry at me because we didn't put a limit to how many calls that were there was in a day. <laughs> and he yeah. had like, th there's like a massive snowball effect in marketing. You do marketing, you know, not a lot of stuff happens, and all of a sudden the snowball gets bigger and bigger. It was a Monday, and he had like eight or nine calls on one day, and he was just like pissed at me. <laughs> but um people very much uh underestimate the power of offers uh 100 million dollar offers you know uh alex Ramosi, you know mm -hmm. what why why should people give a crap about what you're selling them and that's really what it comes down to why do i care about what you're selling me you know or whatever you why do these people care about your product or service and it's uh it's hard. It's hard. But once yeah. you find your niche, once you find your niche, you know, exploit it. Yeah. But if you're, if you're, if, if no one cares, if, see, and this is how I, how I treat campaigns. Um, I hate working with people that, that tell me, you know, they want, they want this guarantee or that guarantee. Uh, even e Eugene Swartz, you know, original uh, marketer. Um, you don't know a campaign until you launch the campaign. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know how it's going to do. And then the data tells you. And based on the data, you make educated decisions, you know. So uh, whenever I do split test copywriting, 
we might we might change a guarantee we might change uh uh if we think that people care about um one thing we'll we'll put that in there but then we'll have three or four other things that they might care about you know they might not care about working for free for example they might care more about uh, this or that you know so it's, mm -hmm. you have to, you have to test the uh, stuff to figure out what people care about i hope that's yeah. not a, a roundabout not, answer no that's perfect they feel um uh... There are too many people that uh, act like they know, but like nobody realistically knows, especially if you're going after a new niche, a new offer. You just have to take action, send a lot of emails. That's why email is so good. It's like so cheap to test it out, test different angles, test different offers to see if it works. And for us, uh, with our lead generation agency, there's like a bunch of times where we were talking with a client about like onboard and we were like, didn't know if it's going to work. For example, we had uh, these two girls from Netherlands, they had a sustainable marketing agency. And we thought it's like a generic, what is like the sustainable part? Like it sounds good, but does it really work? And it turned out it was one of the easiest clients for us. It was so easy to get them clients because they had this sustainable mission. And like you said, if it resonates with the mm -hmm. targets, it's going to work. So we reached out to other sustainable e-com stores with a like completely like a regular marketing agency offer. But the sustainable part there was a menu click and helped us book a lot of meetings so you had this like getting granular nailing it down finding unique angle and then just testing as long mm -hmm. because you can make even those like ecom angles work that you mentioned but yeah it's like very hard saturated yeah. you have to you have to try a lot of different things and usually it's like not worth it but for people just like starting out i think mm -hmm. it's good like not starting from there and mm -hmm. starting with something like more unique and like mm -hmm. let's say now we have the we have a good offer something that's not too generic, a little bit niche down. And now something that everybody asks me all the time is that mm -hmm. email like setup part. Uh, how many domains should I get? How many sending accounts per domain? Mm -hmm. What are the sending limits? Mm -hmm. So how are you guys uh, solving this? Do you have like a specific numbers? Do you have specific like domain providers, amounts? How do you go mm -hmm. about it? This, I'm going to tell you, this, this recording was done January, 2023. <laughs> yeah. what, what I'm going to tell you is that <laughs> there's going to be someone that watches this three months, six months from now, it's completely different. Yeah. Um, the code email industry is notorious for everything breaking <laughs> and then needing to switch different platforms, providers, everything. But as of right now, we're sending, um, I, I prefer to say around 30 cold. So what we do is we, we do a warm up for three weeks. We use your automated warm up. Uh, mm -hmm. we ramp it up for three weeks. I think we ramp it up three, six, nine, twelve, like increments of three, uh, till we hit 30. And then after we hit 30, we ramp it. We, we actually use your, your feature, your, um, uh, I don't know the name, the, the soft, uh, the soft launch feature, we ramp up the sends, mm -hmm. and, uh, then we ramp up to 30 to 50. Mm -hmm. I prefer to stay at 30 just cause I, I, I've had, I had PTSD from, the last time Google changed in 2019 and we were sending 333 a day back then mm. with no automated warm up before lem warm for all that. And, um, yeah, now, now the limits seem to be, you know, 30 to 50 a day cold. Plus in addition to the cold emails, we continue to send the warm up emails. Mm -hmm. So we do 30, 30 warm up emails plus say 50 on the high end, 80 emails a day total per email per domain i know you guys recommend something uh a little less conservative we run real conservative we do one domain per one sender email is what mm -hmm. we do uh there my my logic behind that is if you have three emails on one domain the the inbox del deliverability is based on the domain reputation so instead of one email breaking you have three now mm -hmm. well, that's that's the reason we uh shy away from that we just do one one domain per email yeah i think that's like smart and uh like we should be like more conservative too like when we started because yeah, like everybody wants to send like uh max amount as quickly as possible yeah. like everybody has that but now like for us as well like because we're growing we're affecting like thousands of users like thousands of people are going to watch this and they're going to like take what we recommend uh, and they're going to use that so it's like much better to be conservative much better to think long term because if something like breaks like it's very hard to like uh, repair it. So better be conservative, do it a little bit slower and scale up by getting more domains, more email accounts instead of scaling up 
the volume. So yeah, I think we're on the same page there. I think one more one more point um, yeah. you just made. You said if things were to break, right? One thing that people, one thing that blows my mind to this day is they say, listen, I did everything right. I warmed up right. I did the right sending volume. I did everything right and it broke. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we're running cold email campaigns and every people will mark your messages as spam simply if they don't want to receive them anymore. You know, so at the end of the day, in my head, uh, I assume that a domain is good for three to six months. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I, I, you know, calculate the cost that we're going to replace them. So that's uh, another tidbit information for you. And yeah. it depends on how aggressive you're going, but uh, I burn domains in a, in a month on purpose running a, uh, you want to talk about niches. Um, I targeted people to sell them websites. One of the hardest things I've ever done in my life, you know, generic websites. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the question I asked them was the, the call to action was, um, come on, you, we both know that you need a website. Let's just, let's just get this done and over with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many people were, were angry, but it generated like 19 calls, like in a, in a month. So that was, that was, <laughs> And it's like, I feel what you just said is uh, like super important for people to grasp. Uh, you should expect uh, things to break. Uh, you mm -hmm. never know. So if you're getting money, like invest portion of that back every month, getting new mm -hmm. domains, new sending accounts, warn them up. So you always have more uh, in the backlog that you don't like are in a situation where everything breaks. And now I have to wait another three weeks to start mm -hmm. the campaigns. So always be ready for that. Be conservative mm -hmm. and you'll have a better chance than like most people with that stuff. And yeah. so one of the first things, like how I found you was the lead type scraper from sales navigator. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think like one of the biggest, part. like a lot of questions we get in our group is like, Hey, where do I find these kind of leads? How do I get these kind of leads? Mm -hmm. So once we have the offer, once you have the setup, we have the domains or the emails, we have the warm up running. Uh, how do you guys go about the scraping, the targeting? Are you using your own tool? Are you using multiple ones? Mm -hmm. How do you do it? Yeah. So I, uh, always, try to be as unbiased as possible. Um, we have our own scraping uh, scraping tool, Scrape Pipe, and it generates email lists from LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And we also are able to target USA local brick and mortar businesses like um, nail salon, barbershop and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, we use that tool when we're able to. What you're going to, what the question that you're asking me now is about data and the data industry is a very, very, uh, interesting industry. If you, if you really, you know, get to know it, um, what I'm going to tell you is this, even though we have our own platform, we have, uh, a couple thousand dollars a month we spend on, on other data platforms. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're, we're using other data. We use every, everything you could imagine. Um, so for example, if you want to target chiropractors, <clears throat> our platform could get, you know, a certain amount of chiropractors. Mm -hmm. And then if my client is targeting chiropractors, my, they will stop paying me when my chiropractor list runs out. So yeah. it's, it's now in my best interest to find more data. So now we have to, you know, maybe use D7 lead finder, uh, to get those emails. We might use, um, uh, ocean to get, you know, highly targeted, um, emails as well. Um, anything you can imagine, we, we get data everywhere. Um, but you're never, people always ask me, like, I always see it in, in, as well in, in your group everywhere. Where do I get data from? Mm -hmm. it, it really comes down to what type of data do you want? You know, if you want e-com data, our platform will not get you e-com data. If you want sales, lots of sales navigator data from LinkedIn, our platform is very easy. You copy a URL, you paste it in a tool, click send. Um, we get a very low percentage of brick and mortar stores in our brick and mortar search, but mm -hmm. the data that we get is direct emails. We, we it's not info at it's you know a first name at, and then we're able to get like ten percent of those people have mobile numbers. So um, it's quality data. You, you barely get any of it. So now you got to get, use more data sources, you know, before you know it, if you're running a cold email agency, you know, 
data expenses get get pretty high yeah and i think again like it seems like there's so many uh, like matching patterns like same with uh the setup same with the niche like testing same with like leads like you people shouldn't have the thought that okay i'm gonna get scrape pipe i'm gonna get apollo i'm gonna get ocean it's always evolving it's changing if you're yes, yes. searching for new things so it's like maybe that's like the hard part of like colima like it's always like moving like i love it mm -hmm. yeah like you always yeah. love it but a lot of people are thinking it's like okay i set this up i put the campaign running and that's it like no mm -hmm. like you have to consistently be working on it <laughs> and it's it, it's a full-time job yeah exactly mm -hmm. like i don't know why people like treat it as like some kind of like quick hack like get money fast mm -hmm. like it's it's not that it's like get rich the hard way by the yeah. way <laughs> <laughs> and okay so now we have the niche uh we have the setup done emails warmed mm -hmm. up we have the leads from where where we want them now we can start copywriting like one of the most uh like hardest thing for most people i've seen your videos in the beginning like i learned from your like copywriting strategies are you guys still using the same kind of structure the same templates how do you go about copywriting all right um i'm going to tell you this it's 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 the same thing with the data right it was it's, it's january 2023 we're mm -hmm. talking about which data platform to use i'm going to say the same thing regarding uh your your, your copywriting um everything is evolving always drastically um what was what was working I, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna name drop here the uh uh hope you don't mind and, um the, the the one of the the founder of of lemlist uh mentioned me in one of his posts right mm -hmm. and uh he, he said something that really stuck with me in this post um He's basically saying they analyzed, you know, fifty thousand campaigns. You know, they're they're they're, you know, they they did great data research. But what he said was, out of you know their campaigns, what you learn is that by the time you see a template online, that template has been you know ran through the wash. It's been abused, you know, mm -hmm. to the point where now um, everyone knows about this template. And then in your in your email, in my spam inbox, I see. Um, I saw. I feel that I what I made famous was the. Hey, I found you on LinkedIn. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm. I'm. And like, I, I got a template on Lumless right now from like a campaign I ran a few years ago, and like, it started off as, Hey, I found you on LinkedIn, and I I like regret the whole thing now because it's like abused. Like that template's abused. Um. And now everyone sees it, so now it's not now it's not normal anymore. Now everyone's like, oh, you know, that's that's BS. Like, you know, they mm -hmm. people that are receiving the email know it's BS. Like, um, but at the time it looked very personalized. You know, hey, I found you on LinkedIn. You know, I saw that you were in job role. You know, so I decided to reach out. <laughs> now I'm sending you know the volume, and and people think it's personalized. So, uh, my my tactic for copywriting has always been to write emails that seem personalized to the target audience mm -hmm. as best as i can without sitting there individually writing i, I know one of the other uh, guys in the space teaches uh you know per you know personalizing the first lines all that stuff i i just um that template's the same you know here here's a compliment you know why why uh here's a compliment this is what i sell uh, I had a similar case study, you know, I did ABC for the, for companies, ABC, D, and I would love to do the same for you. You know, mm -hmm. do you have time next week to, to have a call? And it's just like such like this templated, um, response that it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't, it doesn't generate leads. I guess you could say, um, I'm always playing with the newest software out there. Um, you know, back, back when I, I I'm, I'm very, you know, grateful to, to, you know, have open lines of communication with people like yourself, other founders, and, and people always pitch me new products. And I think really where copywriting does the most is if it's unique. I'm not mm -hmm. going to sit here and give you a template that works, right? Because that doesn't work. Yeah. Templates don't work. If you see an online template, uh, use it for inspiration. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm, I'm playing with this uh, platform. Um, what they do is they take a screenshot of someone's website mm -hmm. and then you could go 
your photo could go in front of it and you can make a thumbnail where you're talking about their website in a video. So that's like something I'm, I'm launching uh, soon for a campaign. And it's just like staying ahead, making it personalized. Like one of the best campaigns I ever ran um, was me. I was targeting influencers. And, and let me give you a great example right now. Mm hmm I was targeting influencers, uh, athletic influencers, and our client had, he wanted to work with like big people, big influencers, fit, I'm sorry, fitness influencers. So they had millions of followers that, because they had great bodies, you know, and if, if you want to have a great body, follow me and you can learn from me, right? So he he wanted to take them, force them to sit down and create a course and then if you would create the course and do all the work up front for free for a percentage of revenue on the rear, mm -hmm. you know, talk about an offer. That's one hell of an offer. And he was a, a Google or Microsoft like guy like high, uh, who left, left that company to run his own business. But um, so how do we, the question was, how do we get these major influencers to care enough about this guy, right? Like to sit there and reply to him. What we did was we ended up creating a website of what the app could look like. He was mm -hmm. selling a, an app of the fitness, right? So I had my team go through thousands of Instagrams and copy one photo of them doing like a workout yeah. and embed a photo of them on this website template. And it put their name across it. So it's like a new, a new workout, uh, a new way of living with James. And it was a mm -hmm. photo of James doing a workout on, on this website template that was a GIF that scrolled up and down. So the, the GIF scrolled up and down with their picture on it, and it says their name on the website. And it was a three-sentence quote email. Three sentence. You know, uh, how I found you, why I'm contacting you, do you want to speak and discuss further? But what, what made the campaign great was taking the time to grab the people's photos and embed it creatively onto a template. And what I've always found is that if you could show someone what you're doing, the campaign always does great. So whenever possible, I try to do images, GIFs, uh, stuff like that. I don't have much experience doing video, which is going to be new to me. But I, I hope that uh, yeah. explains yeah. it. Yeah, this is like, uh, like people when they think about like copywriting, it usually is like, like 2D, just like text. But with email, like there's so much more we can do. The, mm -hmm. the same is like I actually saw the uh, in, uh, athletic like, influencer campaign. Uh, I, yeah. I showed it to some of uh, our uh, clients in uh, the education agency. Yeah, your campaign. Okay. With, okay. The, with, the, with the James and the GIF you posted yeah, in your group. Yeah. And like some, uh, we had a client in our education agency for like web development something, mm -hmm. and they asked like, "Oh, how can you do like something interesting?" And I showed them like your campaign. Like this is something that we can do. So exactly like learning from everybody, mm -hmm. seeing these like unique angles. For me mm -hmm. too, like I don't like like this like boring templates, always like mm -hmm. breaking the pattern. People are receiving so many emails every day. So how can you like stop the scroll? Like if you're on their phone, mm -hmm. if you're on their like Mac, just checking email, images help, GIFs, like I mentioned, videos, reviews, like Loom thumbnails, like all of this, again, try it out, try different mm -hmm. angles, take inspiration. There's like so much mm -hmm. out there. You don't have to like start from zero, but I had a... Um, Another podcast with uh, Alex Berman and asked him a similar question, like, do you have like some tricks for copywriting? And he said, like, no, like, if you have a good offer, a uh, proven offer, you have case studies, it's pretty much the same structure. Like you mentioned, mm -hmm. you don't have to figure out some like unique angle. It's just like super simple offer. It mm -hmm. just like works if you have proof for it. But mm -hmm. for these like unique angles, uh, not generic niches, there might be some of these like images and stuff that might help. And yeah, I love this. Uh, we're always like trying new things. For me, like right now, we're trying to do the shortest email possible to get a response. So it's like trying like uh, small challenges for ourselves. And we have like, uh, I think, 30 letter emails bringing in leads. 30 letter? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, very short. Is that, is that one sentence, two sentences? Yeah, like I think one sentence com <laughs> with a comma and then a call to action. But, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've read a few of those. It's um people people um 
I, I started chaos in the Gary Halbert Facebook group mm-hmm. by by saying why does why does short form copy work on cold email, and it turned into like a hundred comments in like in like less than twenty four hours. Um, but yeah, <laughs> short form works in, in cold email is my point. Yeah, I, I feel it's because like if you receive like a, so everybody's so busy, and if you receive something long like. Not anybody is going to take time to go through it. But if you receive one sentence, two sentences, like 90% of people are going to read it. And if it's intriguing, it's just a higher chance of getting through it. So the funnel is like better. You get like more. more there, there's something very important you just uh, uh, mentioned. Um, people people are busy. People don't have time, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're, when, you're, when you're running a campaign, what's, what is the call to action? What, what do you want them to do? Like, like what is the point of the email? you want that like what is the call to action is it to book a call right now is it to get them to commit to a time is it and, and what i've learned is it to get them to click on a web form uh, a link i'm sorry is it is the call to action to click on a link to push them to a landing page where they have to watch a video and then after the video they have to fill out another form mm-hmm. right I, i've had people come to me where that that was the campaign they want to drive traffic to a landing page vsl and then expect them to watch the VSL and fill out a web form. The more steps and friction that you add, the le- the least amount of the lesser amount of leads you'll get. Yes. So um I always push just to get a reply. And like your one sentence email, I'm assuming it's just to generate a reply where people put their hand up and say I'm interested. And yeah. then they're able all they have to do is hit reply, say something. Yeah, sure. You know, I'm interested. And then they don't have to think about you anymore. They know that you're going to chase after them. So it's like they did their job. They're not going to jump through hoops for you. So uh, less friction, more leads, but less friction, more unqualified leads. If you're getting so many leads that you need to qualify them, that's that's different. Yeah, 100% agree. Like our job as co should be making it as simple as possible for the qualified prospects to respond to us. Like it shouldn't Correct. be like, like I'm lazy, just like here's my calendar link, like book something in. Like we should be doing the work, not them. Correct. And, and I see that that's one of the biggest misconceptions that I see, like, because people think about them, like people say, oh, well, I don't want to have to reply to the to people that reply to me. Mm-hmm. They, they're like, oh, can't we just send them my calendar link and expect the the person that's never heard of you to, to spend their time? And it's just it just unfortunately it doesn't work that way. Yeah. It's yeah. Again, it comes down to just like putting in more work, like more effort. Like mm-hmm. with copywriting, you did the images, you did the like custom name and image to the website GIF. Like that's why you get more responses. <laughs> yeah. like another person that just like sends out like templates. And these were dude, those were big. Those were big influencers. That the, the guy in the template was a, a NFL player. Oh damn! <laughs> <laughs> the yes. football football player, American football player. So. Oh, nice. And so I think now it's like the last part. We have the niche, uh, we have a good offer, we have the setup done. We know where we can get leads, searching from them. We know like how to approach copywriting. So now we have the campaigns up and running. How do you guys go about optimizing, managing live campaigns? How many tests do you run? How do you, how do you work on that? Um, it's a good question. It depends, every campaign is different. Um, you run as many different campaigns and, and angles until you determine that you're happy with the results. And if you don't do that and you give up and quit, you'll never know. Yeah. You'll never know if it's, it's a good product, a good pro, you know product market fit. Um, I've had campaigns, you know, 20, 20 versions of copy, you know, uh, play around with copy images, you know, different, different angles, different target lists, you know, um, but to optimize it is simply based on data. Mm-hmm. You know, what's the open rate? Open rate to me is still a, a vanity metric. It doesn't mean much to me. It just means that whether you're in spam or not, but the real, the real metric is how many people are replying to you and not just replies, but positive replies. So uh, one thing that we do, you know, is we count positive replies. Um, we don't even use your, your uh, internal uh, reply metric. We uh, actually go in there and count how many were positive. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, that way we know, and then we count human replies. So how many human replies were there versus automated, and then how many of those human replies were positive? 
and then that's how we determine the positive reply rate and if it's if it's not healthy um try to improve it mm -hmm. but if the question is what is healthy that's extremely different you know i've had a a campaign that had 44 percent reply rate i've had a campaign that had a 0.1 percent reply rate and that 0.1 percent reply rate campaign was enough to generate sales calls for three full-time people yeah so yeah so i feel that the kpi part is again like we're getting so many questions like oh what the open rate should be what's the reply rate be but like talking with like you talking with all other people like the main metric that matters is like revenue it's not just like are the clients are you making money from this so you can have a positive reply rate that's like 10 and you make no money or you can have like one percent positive reply rate and you're making tens of thousands of dollars monthly so yeah focus on the actual like numbers like watch open rate from time to time like you said like uh, symptomatically to see if you're in spam or not but then just like yeah focus on actual uh, actual money actual like uh, clients actual closes not anything else and i feel like we've like covered a lot of this one, one, one thing if you don't mind there, there's two types of campaigns your statistics should be based on how large of an email list you have for example if you're capable of targeting a hundred thousand people a million people mm -hmm. that reply rate is different then if you have a thousand people that you're reaching out to that thousand people you, you better have you know 10 percent plus reply rate yeah. you know so uh versus if you have millions of contacts you know the campaign's a little different so yeah i agree 100 percent. like the less uh, people have the more personalized they have to be the more yes more customized you just have to put in more work to take the maximum out of them yeah. yes i 100 percent agree yeah. unfortunately something that people don't want to do and which is yeah. exactly the reason why we partnered with you guys mm -hmm. uh to help people like the setup stuff the spf dkm all this stuff you guys now help instant users to set that up mm -hmm. and you also help them like with the fully managed campaigns so mm -hmm. to end the call can you just mm -hmm. like quickly cover people like if they have uh, they want some somebody mm -hmm. or like you to set up their email mm -hmm. accounts uh, how does that work and if they want fully managed campaigns mm -hmm. how does that work with you yeah, so we're, there's really two different types of of people right there, there's people that are there's people that are, are running campaigns successfully already mm -hmm. um there are best client people that run campaigns they know cold email works but and they also appreciate the amount of labor that's associated with managing campaigns mm -hmm. um what what is actually crazy to me is that they have people that were, you know, US based clients, they have US employees and they're expecting them to um, basically pay the, the, the US based employee salary. And their job is to learn software, learn the cold email software, learn all this stuff. Um, and those are our best clients where they prefer to have our team, you know, 15 people. We're growing like crazy right now, but to have our team of 15 plus people manage their campaign because it's very easy for us like uh uh if you if you have 50 domains that get disconnected on instantly for example you know uh it's it's very labor intensive you know to change the, the custom tracking domain or to uh just the sheer volume we had a client recently uh 750 domains right yeah <laughs> so now imagine imagine sitting down uh, there's so much time to purchase uh just to come up with the names the 750 names in a spreadsheet right yeah you come up with the note the na domain names and then you have to actually purchase them configure mm -hmm. dkm D, uh, dns dmark everything right and then upload them to instantly start them warming it's just a very labor intensive product so we have one service where we just do everything for you it's uh we call it our white glove sending service um you know, that's everything's custom uh, on that that campaign. Everyone has custom requirements. Um, but if, if you're tired of managing campaigns yourself and want to hand it to a team, that's what we do. And on the other side, uh, for instantly users, what we're doing is we're just on your behalf. We're purchasing domains and emails for you. Uh, right now, we're doing Zoho and uh, Google Workspace emails. We'll purchase the domain and email 
set up all the correct settings um, and then start warming it up per best practice. You know, we'll, we'll warm it up in their instantly account. Um, this is probably one of the most labor intensive parts of a uh, quote email. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we, we worked on a, a, a great price, a reasonable price for everyone for that. It's a one-time, one-time cost, um, roughly $30 per email, which includes the domain and email. So. Yes. Perfect. And yeah, I feel, uh, a lot of people are struggling, uh, beginners, uh, with, uh, mm. email setup. So if you just don't want to deal with it, you just want to get mm. into the meat of it. You just want to close. You just want to start making money faster. I think it makes sense to just hire Andrew. I'm going to add link below mm. uh, this video. You can check it out, contact them. You can obviously like try it out on your own, but yeah, if you want to scale fast, mm. like we learned it the hard way, like it's almost smarter for you as a founder to use leverage you shouldn't be doing this manual stuff like it's so easy to outsource yeah. it's smarter for you to have somebody like andrew at lead hub setting this up for you and same for the campaign management if you just you have a you're a business owner you're really good at closing or you have a really good mm -hmm. offer it just makes sense if you're not doing this full time you want someone to take yeah. care of this for you having somebody who has experience just managing it and you just like yes the margins might be a little bit like smaller, but at the end you're gonna make so much more money mm -hmm. because these dudes are gonna bring you so many more leads than you could on your own. So all the links are down below. Check them out. I'm gonna link Andrew's Facebook group. You can mm -hmm. check everything out. You have a YouTube channel. All the links are gonna be down below. Cool. Thank you so much, Andrew, for being here. Thank you all. Yeah, I hope it uh, the partnership works well and super excited yeah. to get started. Perfect. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye bye.